There are different classes of seeds, and there's a lot of confusion and a lot of myths floating around out there about those three classes. In this video, I'm going to set the record straight. Hey guys, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Click subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. Today I'm gonna cover some seed drama that has come up a lot in the comments lately. Well, not lately, actually for a long time. So it's time we actually talk about it. Let's dive right in, the good, the bad, and the ugly. First of all, there are three types or classes of seeds, hybrids, heirlooms, and GMO. So let's escort the big ugly elephant out of the room right up front. GMOs are not created through processes that happen in nature. They happen in a laboratory where scientists in, insert specific genes into the plant's genetic material. And these genes don't even have to be plants. They can insert bacterial genes into a plant's makeup. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the, the positives and negatives and the possible moral and health implications associated with this process. That could probably fill an entire video on its own um, or maybe even a book. But I will tell you that as a home gardener, there is zero chance that you are accidentally growing GMO seeds in your garden that you didn't know about. The reason is, is those seeds, first of all, would be very expensive. The only people who can afford them are the large scale farmers. And it's actually impossible for you to even get your hands on them because they are tightly controlled by the companies that create them, like Monsanto, because if they let them out into the general public, they would lose all control of that. So there are some companies out there that on their seed packets or their catalogs, they'll say GMO free. That's just creative marketing, stating the truth, but it's still creative marketing. So you're not growing GMO seeds, even if you're growing corn, wheat, and soybeans in your garden. So if that is good news and you're happy to hear it, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're a smarty pants and you already knew that, let me know that too. So that leaves two types of seeds that are available to the home gardener, and that is heirlooms and hybrids. Now, while hybrid might sound like some mutant alien that comes from another planet and you would never want something like that in your garden, hold on just a minute. Hybrids happen every single day in your garden, in my garden, in nature. It's basically just a cross between two plants. So a bee goes to one variety of tomato, goes to the other variety of the tomato flower, pollinates them. That is a hybrid. It's also done by wind for some plants like corn. And it is done by hybridizers, plant breeders. But instead of a uh, microscope and a needle injecting genes, it's done with somebody maybe in overalls with a little paintbrush. When you cross two tomatoes in a controlled environment, the offspring is called an F1 hybrid, basically the first generation. My new favorite cherry tomato, Sun Gold, is an F1 hybrid. But for me, that means I can't take a um, Sun Gold tomato off the vine, save the seeds, grow it next year, and get a Sun Gold, because I won't. Those seeds will not produce a Sun Gold tomato. They will produce tomatoes with similar characteristics to one or both of the parents. And to breed the parents to produce the Sun Gold, it required a lot of inbreeding. And when you inbreed anything, it causes weaknesses. So generally the plants that you get from the Sun Gold tomato are gonna be very inferior, may not even grow well, and if they do, the fruits may not even taste good. Now, if you continue to grow these Sun Gold seeds and, and sort them and, and choose them carefully over several generations, then that variety is stabilized, meaning at that point you could plant the seeds uh, from the Sun Gold tomato and it would grow a Sun Gold tomato, as long as you keep it from being cross-pollinated in your garden by bees. If you're having trouble following this, like I might have had trouble saying it, 
let's simplify things and talk about dogs, like Boomer here. So there are specific breeds of dogs that have been established over the centuries, like Poodles or Golden Retrievers. Those specific breeds of dogs were created by inbreeding. So close your ears. Mating mothers with sons, fathers with daughters, uh, brothers and sisters. Yeah. I know. That is done, just like plants, to stabilize the characteristics of those breeds. Once those breeds are stabilized, you can mate a poodle with a poodle, not in the same family line, and you'll get a poodle. You can mate a golden retriever with a golden retriever, you get a golden retriever. If, however, you cross the two breeds and you mate a poodle with a golden retriever, you get a golden doodle. We had one of those before we had Boomer. Now, a golden doodle would be an F1 hybrid. The golden doodle is a mix uh, of the desirable characteristics between the, the parents, the poodle and the golden retriever. And they all look pretty similar to one another. But if you then breed two of the F1 hybrids, the golden doodles, you're not going to get golden doodle puppies. You're going to get puppies that either look more like a poodle or more like a golden retriever. So F1 hybrids do not breed true. They become mutts, kind of like Boomer. <laughs> so hybridization produces great things and it produces not so great things, at least from a flavor standpoint. Hybridization is the reason that grocery store tomatoes taste so flat. Grocery store tomatoes are not bred for flavor. They're bred for color, shape, uh, speed for, to harvest, and they're bred to be able to last a long time after picking them because they have to go through the picking process, through the travel to the grocery store, and then sitting on a shelf. So they're not bred for taste, and that is pretty darn obvious. That brings us to heirloom tomatoes. Now, heirloom tomatoes are varieties that are stabilized, that have been passed down through the generations, typically between 50 and 100 years old or more. Now, there's some argument and debate on the numbers and what truly constitutes an heirloom. We're not going to get into that. And they are open pollinated, which means you can save the seeds, provided you protect them from cross pollination in your garden, and they will produce the same tomato year after year after year. So another question I get a lot is, do I have to buy organic seeds? And the answer to that is no, but you might want to. So there are seed companies out there that state that their seeds are grown organically, which means they're going to be stronger, more robust, and more ready to adapt to a organic lifestyle in your garden. Plants and seeds have no idea that they're being grown organically, so they are not going to adapt better to an organic garden. Seed genetics are not altered because a plant is grown organically for several years. Seed quality and robustness and hardiness is more determined by the, uh, ge the genetic makeup of the plant and to a, a smaller extent how well the plant is grown in the garden before it it produces its seeds and comes to you. Larger plants are going to produce stronger, larger seeds. Uh, but because they're grown organically, that's not going to make a difference. So from a safety standpoint, feel free to get your seeds wherever you like. I myself personally choose to buy first from organic growers because I want to support organic farming. So if my seeds come from an organic source, they obviously gardened or farmed organically to get them to that point. So that is the reason I buy organic. Now, if there's something you really, really want and you can't find it organically, then buy it. There's absolutely no problem with that. So if this video helped, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications. And I'll see you guys next time.